education where I have the incredible privilege to have subject matter experts on in the area of mindset, mental performance, um, and mental health that can help you and help me learn tested and tried tools to overcome adversity, challenge, and change in our lives. And today, I'm, I'm really excited to have uh, Dr. Hank on. Dr. Hank, uh, you know, I called his voicemail to check in with him a little earlier. And if you haven't called him, you should, because it's going to lift your day. Just even listening to his voicemail, he is um, the owner of uh, the, is it the success of wealth? Yeah, that, uh, that it's basically, I mean, I'm the owner of uh, Dr. Hank Inc., if you will, but I basically help people become their greatest possibility. And I do that through using the mind. We each have an all-powerful mind that can either uh, create that controversy, diversity that you were discussing and those challenges. And uh, I really have the easy answer and I've helped thousands of people and Fortune 100 companies all over the world. And it's really quite simple. And uh, in fact, if everybody would do it, Charlie, we'd have to shut down your show and do something else. <laughs> I, 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 I would I would love that. Wouldn't that be great? And, and yeah. it's it's so true, you know, and, and I think, you know, obviously you're you're an award winning author. You've written 14 books um, and really now. And, and when you reached out to me, your message was simply I reached a point in my career where I, really I just want to help give back to yeah. people that are struggling, because you do have some answers. And, yeah. you know, I know for me, and, and, and I, I want to get into a little bit of your origin, because I want to know how you found a passion in helping people overcome our greatest adversary, which is really our own mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only devil there is, is our, our thoughts in with our lower self, uh, which I call the committee. And so it's kind of like, in our heads here, we have a, a, um, a beautiful mahogany table with beautiful leather executive chairs and, and a, up in that smaller self in our mind that those chairs are filled with fear and worry and complaining and blaming and shame and guilt. And so if we listen to uh, the committee that uh, we really can get into trouble and really not have the life that we all can have, we all deserve an abundance in life. And uh, for me personally, to answer directly your question that um, I was actually an executive with Procter and Gamble and going through amazing uh, training about half the time I was uh, in training, the other half the time I multi a managing a multi-billion dollar business. And um, I had just created, and it was amazing results with Procter & Gamble, a way to use uh, my PhD as in mental science. So I'm a mental scientist and how to use that. And then I'm a behavior psychologist. And then I'm also an ordained minister because I did four years of seminary school, but so I just couldn't figure out this God stuff. <laughs> and, uh, and so the accumulation of all that, and I created this amazing Procter & Gamble wanted me to take this internationally to help their uh, company to uh, grow their business. And basically all it was was a process to tap into the mind and into our heart and to have all the answers and solutions that we want. But in one of these training episodes, Charlie, was a meditation where they put us in a meditation and I started and I was doing a little meditating and I was into the spiritual, non-physical world, if you will, and understood that. But she really had me. It was in Canon D minor and listening to this music. And, and all of a sudden it came to me that my um, desire, my vision for my soul's vision was to help both myself and others to become our greatest possibility. And so I basically woke up out of that, left Procter and Gamble, and it's been a wild ride ever since, a glorious ride where I just fly with my angels and have a good time and have accumulated all the things that I desire with the things that we'll share with today and how easy it is to have the life of our dreams. Wow, what an amazing story. It's, it's, it takes a lot of courage. You know, I know we all get attached to our story and that kind of story of going to school and getting a degree and getting that dream job. Procter & Gamble, I'm sure at the time was a dream job for anybody sure. in this country. I mean, that was one of the, and still yeah. remains, you know, to be one of the, one of the hallmarks of our country and to have that, that opportunity. And then to say, I want more, I want some, not, not necessarily materially more, but I want more for myself and what I can do. 
And, yeah. and how hard is it to find that, that courage to make that break? Cause I think a lot of people feel trapped in yeah. a situation because of the story. And we'll get into the stories we tell ourselves. I always yeah. like to say, I want to break down the opponent for you. And, and, it's, <laughs> and, it's, and, 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 and it's up here and, and, and it's, and it's our biggest opponent, but how, how where does, where did that courage come from? And what yeah, was the biggest yeah. challenge you faced in doing that? So, so actually a really good, one of my uh, 15 books uh, that I have is called the happiest man in the world. And you can get that at Kindle on Amazon and just uh, type in Hank and then sites S E I T Z there. And that's really a story about where my life was like everybody at most everybody else's going up and down, up and down, up and down. And, uh, and then the book actually takes you through on where I realized, oh my goodness, I can rise above all that and just observe it. And so what I did as far as everybody told me when I was going to make the decision to leave Procter and Gamble, and this is my in-laws, and you know, all kinds of people were there saying, Oh no, don't leave all that right. security, all that money, all that stock, all those benefits, all that health insurance, blah, 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 blah. And um, you know, life just isn't like that. And I knew that this was my passion and my calling. And so I look at it. In fact, I, I help lots of people that are leaving corporate America or leaving their job, which is just over broke, J-O-B, <laughs> and, uh, and going out on their own and doing their passion, doing the things that they love and enjoy. And it doesn't matter what it is, by the way, and all the money will follow you as long as you're true to your, your passion. But like yesterday, what I was uh, sharing with a, um, uh, uh, a mom and who was really fearful about it. And I said, imagine this, that probably right now you're thinking, you know, I'm on this cliff and I'm going to jump off. <laughs> and, you know, gee, I hope I land okay and in the water or whatever. But if you will just have faith that you have this higher power and that when you jump off anywhere to go to a greater place, especially, that that higher power is there to give you wings and you will start flying and soaring like an eagle. And so, yeah, but it's a matter of having this faith on knowing that it's okay. In fact, any decision that any of us make, if we will just make the decision and go to it and just start it one step at a time, one thought at a time, that it will lead us to everything that we want. You know, most people are so afraid. I, I, I'm like, you know, you think like you're going to die or something with this. And then they go, well, you know, I might not have a roof over my head. Hey, come on. How long for most of us, so 99.9% of us, we've always had a roof over our head. We've always had food. That, that, and so really what these are is this is fear. And fear is an acronym of false evidence appearing real. And when we start realizing that our fears are really the only devil there is, the only thing working against us, there's nothing in this whole wide, beautiful universe that is working against us, is trying to sabotage us, that the only thing that's trying to sabotage you, the only devil, if you will, is that little voice. And it's that voice that wakes you up in the middle of the night and you can't get back to sleep. You keep on thinking, thinking, thinking it. And so the solution for this, Charlie, is really uh, very simple. And But you have to say it's simple. And uh, because whatever we focus our attention on grows, so you had mentioned, hey, I want to get into, you know, one of my stories and, you know, tell you all about it and everything. And usually, like, when I will, will coach with people, that I really tell them, you know, I mean, I'll hear a little of the story. I want it less than a minute because within a minute that what it does is it, it your thought on a particular subject within a minute, it starts creating energy to attract more of it. And so you really don't want to focus your attention on anything you don't want. I mentioned that I'm a behavioral psychologist and 
so one of the things my peers do is they'll set you on a couch and they go, come on, let's dig this up. You know, when you were five years old, what did your, you know, mother tell you, you know, et cetera. And what that is, it's a rabbit hole. There's really no, and it's a great way to keep on billing patients, if you will, because there's no end to that. But if you move to the other end, and so again, those rabbit holes, those things we don't want, and if all of us will just look at life very easily and in this way, this world is a perfect world with everything we want and everything we don't want. So it's not really good or bad. It's what we want or what we don't want. So start waking up to when you are starting to think about something that you don't want, the more you focus on it, the more it's going to come to you. Like people say to me, well, I don't want COVID. Well, right when you say COVID, that you have gone to the energy level, which is a low energy level of sickness, of illness, and you will attract sickness and illness, maybe COVID, maybe something related to that. So, but we've been taught, hey, you got to face reality. You know, this is in front of you. Look at your bank account. You know, look at, um, you know, your relationships. Look at your health, whatever it is. And so all of science and what I've been teaching, it's really great, Charlie, to know this, that what I've been teaching for actually over 30 years now, that in the, just in the last five years, all of science, and this is molecular biologists, quantum physicists, um, uh, neuroscientists, all of the disciplines of science have agreed that there are just three steps to create anything in our life. And I'm going to share those steps with you. Yes. Yeah, no, I, I'm ready. I'm, I'm counting them down, man. <laughs> and so... It is, so step one, according to the scientists, and again, what I've been teaching for 30 years and helping thousands of people all, across, all around the world in order to help them to be, do, and have more if they want, is step one is our thought. Our thought starts it all. Biblically, because we're in a Christian Judeo society that biblically most of us are familiar with, ask and you shall receive. And this asking is our thought. So some people say, well, I'm waiting for God to, you know, make the decision for me. good luck. But, you know, that's an eternal wait because God's waiting for you to ask, if you will. And so we need to. So this is our thought and our all powerful thought. And I have some amazing uh, ways to be able to improve your thinking. In fact, catch this, Charlie, we have 60,000 thoughts a day, each one of us. And, and, about, and by, 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 I was just going to ask you, by science, how many of those are negative? Yeah, very good. 80%. 80% of those are, so you mentioned negative, but I'll call that, it's negative, but I'll call that more uh, under my teaching as unwanted. Because yeah. all they are is unwanted. Okay. And when we keep it easy, instead of all oh, those are negative and bad, and evil, you know, whatever, that there's too much emotion in that. Okay. And whatever you put your emotion in that you will create in your life. So I don't want to put it. So it's just what I don't want. Yeah. And so 80% of those thoughts, 60,000 thoughts every day, 80% on average, average person has thoughts that are unwanted, but you think that's bad. <laughs> that um, 95% of all the thoughts are the same thoughts we had yesterday, which gives us the same tomorrow. All of us want 2022, Charlie, to be better. And this is the path on how to be better. And so I need to, I can start asking for I'd like to expand my imagination. Well, if you expand your imagination, you're going to go outside of that 95% same thoughts and you're going to start getting some new thoughts. And so again, back to science, step one is it's your all powerful thought. And according to the scientists, that thought then creates energy, which we would call our emotions. That's why our emotions are so powerful and they create whether they're wanted emotions or unwanted emotions. 
And so whatever I focus my attention on will grow and my energy, my emotions will grow. And then step three is that turns in, again, according to the scientists, that that turns into matter, M-A-T-T-E-R. And this, Charlie, is why thoughts become things. Thoughts become your experience. So if you want to, you know, and, and let's do an example to help everybody really understand the power of thoughts. And I like using money because money, we have all been taught it's tough to get. Uh, you got to work hard for it. It's the root of all evil. Money doesn't grow on trees. I lived in Florida. There's billions of dollars worth of trees of orange trees, grapefruit trees, whatever. And uh, so, so all those things are simply what I don't want. Okay. And I, uh, in fact, if you, I would suggest everybody write down easy money, easy life. If you start just saying easy money, easy life, easy money, easy life, if that's all you would ever say, you know, 60,000 thoughts every day, you would have easy money and easy life. I guarantee you. But um, so, so for us, so now let's use money that, um, <clears throat> that there um, about, oh, in, in the last century, uh, there were no billionaires, okay? And uh, um, until, you know, so it's uh, 50 years, whatever ago, there were no billionaires. Now there's four or five billionaires that are, equivalent to a trillion dollars okay and this is just I, I mean that number is so big and so unimaginable that you know people don't uh, moss just paid a billion dollars taxes you know whatever most ever in the history of, of mankind now I'm, I'm going to ask a question that if there weren't any billionaires and now there's like um there's almost four thousand billionaires okay that where did the money come from uh, is there a spaceship that's getting it from some other planet? Do we have a pipe that, you know, of, of money that's coming from somewhere that's coming in? No, it is our thought, our desire for more. In fact, this world is way better than it was 100 years ago. Way, way better. I mean, there's more and more people getting into middle class all around the world now. There's more stock markets that have helped create this wealth. And it's all made up. Crypto is all made up. I mean, I, and I'm making so much money on that. I bought uh, um, the first crypto, I don't know, like maybe six and a half years ago uh, for, you know, just a couple hundred dollars. Now it's worth 50 grand, you know, <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, you know, and it's all in the mind. Everything is made up. We make it up. So why don't we, instead of going back to our old story or whatever, why don't we just go ahead and start making a new story? And you, we each have the power to do that. Now, some people have told me that, uh, uh, and, and let me just stop there. Do you understand that point there on money that, that you know, where'd the money come from, that it was really from our thought? It was Did that drive home a point there, Charlie? A absolutely. absolutely. I, I think it, it drives home the point about this expansion theory, which is what we focus on expands where our attention goes, our energy flows, because our mind is creating it, it's, you know, and let's, I, I mean, I've never heard anybody before. And I've, you know, I come from a, a long history. And, and I'll tell you that I'm a big windshield versus rearview mirror guy. Okay. When I get in the car, there's two pieces of glass. And like you said, the rearview mirror has got a little information in it. It could be about yeah. a minute of the story because there's some lessons that I've learned from the rearview mirror. But if I spend all day fucking looking at that rearview mirror when I'm driving, <laughs> I'm going off the road. The windshield is is 10 times bigger than the rearview mirror, man. Yeah, I love but, it. But I've got this Velcro in my mind. I've got this attachment that seems stronger to my negative, or un, I'm going to use that term, unwanted thoughts. My unwanted yeah. thoughts seem to attach and feel so much stronger yeah. than, than these easy to come by affirming thoughts because we somehow dismiss if it's so easy to say it can't be true. I need yeah. that energy yeah. of this struggle, this, this, right. I've got to, I've got to just fight these feelings and fight these thoughts versus this yeah. idea of, and I love it, just a simple thought strategy. Yeah. Cause, and I think that's what I'm, I, I, I hear 
you about to give our, our listeners is yes, your mind's weaponized against you. Yes, most of your thoughts are negative. Yes, negative thoughts are more powerful or unwanted thoughts are more powerful than wanted thoughts. But if you don't have a thought strategy to create new thoughts, your mind uses oxygen and blood and it wants to conserve energy. So if you've got an old thought, your mind's like, hey, let's stick with this one, man, because I don't have to work to find a new one, right? (laughs) And so so a few things that I think you said that wanted unwanted thoughts are more powerful than wanted thoughts. And let me let me make sure that I clarify why that isn't the case. And regardless whether you exactly said that or not, that know this, because this gives us all some hope here to overcome. And uh, this uh, adversity, these challenges that we have in, in life. And there are, are two of the most powerful energies that there are. And I'm going to describe them. The first one is fear. And fear, I mentioned false evidence appearing real. And really everything, you know, I fear leaving my job. I fear, will I still have my job? I fear, will I get COVID? You know, whatever. There's all kinds of things that we could choose to think about. And it is the second most powerful energy to create in your life. Absolutely. The good news is, Charlie, that the most powerful energy that overcomes fear is love. We, in essence, are all love, pure love. Now, we've been given this amazing mind. And some people ask, well, why are we here on this Mother Earth? And so I like giving this example that we're, um, and it's going to mix in two topics here, and and uh, and it didn't exactly w- play out this way, but it's a good way to illustrate because we're human beings and we think everything is physical and it's got to be some guy, you know, God, some guy. So let's say that um, we're up in a place called heaven, and uh, we're sitting on God's lap, okay, and it's really not this physical thing; it's all mental and energy and this loving energy, and that's what God is, your higher power or whatever you want to call that. And you're sitting there and you're saying to God, oh, I just can't wait to get back to Mother Earth. It is the most glorious place. It has everything I want in it and everything that I don't want in it. And I know that the things that I don't want when I brush up against them, that it helps me to birth new thoughts and new feelings about what I do want. And I know that because of this, this expands thought and energy to give us literally all of us, God and all it is, eternal life. Eternity, it expands eternity. That's why every one of us are so critical and so key to everything that is happening uh, and to all that is and, and forever lasting life. It's this amazing ability to live down here. This is a happening place, Charlie, where we get to bump up against some contrast, things we don't want, and then birth these new ideas of what we do want. However, We look at God and we say, sitting on God's lap, and we say, you know, God, I have a question, though. How are you going to guide me when I'm down here? You know, are you going to speak English to me? Are you going to speak Spanish? You know, what language are you going to communicate me to guide me? Because I know you love me and forever and ever and for always and that you want to guide me and support me. So what language is that that you're going to do? And God looks at you, each one of you, and just has the shower of love and says, oh, my dear child, I love you so. And I have a better way to communicate with you. So you will be on your lighted path and joyously just skipping on your golden lighted path. And you go, oh, my gosh, that's fantastic. What language is it? And God says, it's not a language. It's better than that. It's your language feelings. I will communicate with you every moment of every day. When you feel bad, 
That is your higher power, God, whatever term you want to use. That is your higher power telling you, you're not thinking about this as we are. Whereas when we feel good, that we are thinking about this as our higher power. So really, we only need to be guided by our feelings. And so we don't need, even need to monitor our thoughts. It's just our feelings. And if you will keep it that simple and ask this one question every day for all of you, and again, I would write this down, is today, I want to feel good. Because when you ask, the father does the work. We've been taught, Charlie, hey, you got to, you know, figure it out. You got to stomp on it. You got to grab it. You got to wrestle it down. None of that. None of that. The father does the work. That I don't have to do anything. Because we became come magnets to the things that we're thinking about. And it's called the law of attraction, whatever. And if you don't believe it, it doesn't matter. It's happening all the time, whether you believe it or not, that whatever you're th focusing your attention on, you're going to get more of it. So, and I can pretty much assume that none of us, other than myself, this morning said, today, I want to feel good. Today, I want to feel better. Today, I want to laugh more. Today, I want to smile more. Today, I want to attract wonderful, harmonious, uh, similar-minded people where we help each other to achieve our desires and realize our desires. Oh, my gosh. And then here's a beautiful mindset to do. And, and you only need about 10 minutes every day to do this. 15, 20 minutes, max half hour every day. And you will become a deliberate creator and you will have the life of your dreams. But here's a great one that, again, I would recommend you all do this. People pay lots of money to me to get, have this. But simply ask, I want a long, happy, healthy, and wealthy life. And don't we all? We want a long, happy healthy, and wealthy life. Boom. I want a long, healthy, uh, happy. happy, wealthy life. And, and, and where that intention, it's so, it, we're so apt to, to, and I think, you know, I'll turn, use the term, this problem centric thinking. We talk to each other about problems. We look at probably listen to problems and all you're discussing is vote for what you want because that is what you want. That's right. cast a cast a vote for it. When you wake up in the morning, you don't have to overcomplicate it. You don't have to go through some geometry formula. It's no. state the intention of the life that you want. Happy, healthy, wealthy life. A and, long, and how, happy, long, healthy, happy, wealthy life. Yeah. And, um, and that's a thought strategy. And, that, and, and, and it's very simple. And you will start being amazed. Now, I'm going to do one thing for you, Charlie, and your wonderful, divine, all you divine ones out there, is I'm going to give you for free. All you need to do is contact me. You earlier said, hey, just call Dr. Angle, listen to his voicemail. My number's 214-753-7204. Two one four seven five three seventy two zero four, and if you text me and call me whatever that and uh, say hey I want the joy shop, and what the joy shop is, is a way in the morning to read some joyous thoughts that I have been given. I channel with divine intelligence that I have given that will raise your vibration, which raises your point of attraction to start attracting more of the things you do want. And then three things to write down each day that guaranteed will make your life magical, make your day magical and make your future bright. And you can also email if you want Dr. Hank at drhank.biz, B-I-Z, so drhank at drhank.biz, and ask me for the joy shop. And that is a life changer. And ha I have used for years to help people become their greatest possibility. So yeah, and we just really, if we would just stop thinking, uh, so you mentioned 
uh, problems. Let me let me clarify to help everybody's mindset on how to think about this. Yes, that that if you call it problems, it is a problem. <laughs> it's not going to be good. It's a low vibrational word. If you look at there's a vibrational um, up high and up here high is appreciation is empowerment is love and then kind of down here is hope and below the 50 percent line now we're you know into despair and fear and the things that we don't don't want and so uh so if we use the word work uh replace that with play i'm gonna go play today i mean it's it, it'll change your whole day just by using the words vibrationally, those higher vibrational words. Now, back to this, oh, we got problems and I got, you know, in my childhood was this way and my, you know, they beat me, you know, whatever, okay? All of our stories, and I believe me, I have all kinds of stories too, that, you know, I've been paralyzed from my waist down and now, woo, I can walk. And, and so in all with the power of my thought uh, that I, I literally uh, was numb from my waist down from a car accident and was able to, um, uh, to not believe I didn't honor the God of other people's opinion. And the doctors and saying, oh, you'll never walk again. We can't operate. And I said, hey, I'm going to walk. I just started visualizing me walking, breathing deeply. But back to this contrast. So the things that we don't want is in the problems and everything. If all of us will start looking at all those unwanted things as blessings, this is a blessing because, for example, just mentioned I, you know, was paralyzed halfway down. That how can that be a blessing? Well, that when I call forth and I look at it as a blessing, and it actually helps me with sharing the good news about the powerful creators, co-creators that we are, that you can do anything. You do all these things and even more. And so we all have the power to be doing, have anything, all things that are possible. And, and this is the path is with our thought. But if you look at a problem and don't look at it as a blessing, that problem starts getting bigger. And not only do you get that problem, but you get cooperative components that give you more problems. So some people say to me, Dr. Hank, why don't you face reality? Well, first of all, I know that reality, what I'm looking at right now is old news. Because what did I share with you? It was our thoughts that created energy that created what I'm looking at right now. So this is old news. It's just accumulation of my thought that has brought me to what I want. If I want to change tomorrow, I simply start thinking about what I want. And how do I do that? Ask. Please give me thoughts about what I do want. Bring me clarity. Give me more business. Help me to show me the way. That's just another beautiful one, Charlie. Show me the way. Because literally your higher power knows exactly where you are, exactly where you want to go, and the easiest path in order to get there. You don't have to figure it out. So look at everything as blessings, whether it's a car accident, whether you were sick before that. And where's the blessing that if I was sick before, it created better health for me now because sickness, I said, oh, I'm sick. I don't like that. What do I want? That's what I don't want. What do I want? Oh, I want to be healthier. I want to feel younger. I want to be filled with energy and just feeling good and dancing and happy and smiling and laughing. And boom, I go off and I end up creating a better life than what I had before. And that's with everything. When I would let go of people at Procter & Gamble, they were like, oh, this is the worst thing. And I said, I guarantee you, if you'll change your mindset on that and look at this as an opportunity for you to have a better future, a better job, a better, you know, th things you'd like doing a be a more than where you are now, you will call me in six months, a year, you know, five years, whatever, you will call me. And sure enough, people will call me and say, God, I, I didn't really believe you, but I took your advice and I started saying, hey, this is a blessing because it's going to birth. What do I want? What do I want? And it led them to a better life. So all of us can have a better life simply with the power of 
our thoughts, Charlie. Wow, I mean, it's so powerful, and and you know, the the I think what I'm what I'm getting so powerfully out of you is is the language that we use. The the language is the wardrobe of our identity. We create yeah. this kind of cloak, you know, these 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 blouses and shirts and blazers we wear are the wardrobe of the words we use. So, yeah. you know, clarifying wanted versus unwanted, clarifying problems versus blessings in my life. You know, yeah. these are things, these are, these are thoughts turned into words that lead to feelings that allow us to take the action in support of those things. And, and I think, you know, there's a little bit of confusion about that. Maybe you can clear it up. Um, in fact, I want to go back to something you said, because you, you, yeah. you spoke about it with the doctors you talked about, and it's a, it's a growing epidemic in our country, this FOPO fear of other people's opinions. And you talked about the doctor's opinions, you know, yeah. and, and, and so how much influence do we have over ourselves versus other people? And, and why are we so apt to listen to the narrative of others versus turning up the volume of our own inner champion? Yeah. Yeah. It's a great one. First of all, to be very clear that we are the creators of our experience. Nobody else is unless you accept that reason why most of us aren't very deliberate in our creating, we honor the, the God, small g, God of other people's opinion, is basically our upbringing. You know, my mother, father, hey, you listen to me, you know, we know about that, you know, you do that. So we've been conditioned, we need to listen. And if we don't, you know, we get into big time trouble, you know, I don't want to get into trouble. So I'm going to just, you know, listen, like, I would recommend to all of us turn off the TV, especially on if it's not a fun, happy, loving movie or something, uh, or something where, you know, it's not talking about things you don't want go listen to a, a news station that has spent millions of dollars to find unwanted things in the world. I already told you, there's everything I wanted in this world and everything wanted, and we get to choose. Now, a really interesting point you bring up, Charlie, though, is about, you know, this influence on other people. And so we have been brought up, you can't change other people. Okay. And that just isn't true. It's another belief that isn't true. I can change anybody because anybody is angelic or not alpha to the mega or not. Okay. And that if I can, and so I have a fun little story that I'll, I'll share with you that when uh, I'm uh, with my wife to be Sharon, and we're going to go meet her parents for the first time. <laughs> and um, she first of all tells me that her dad's name is Sledge. <laughs> I'm like, oh boy, like a sledgehammer or something. Yeah, right. And uh, we're driving there, and she has a belief because of her previous experience. That's why our previous experience typically isn't our friend. That um, because we can change anything, any person, any circumstance, if we use our minds in order to do that and uh, on what we want and think about what we want. But she had these beliefs, past boyfriends, husbands, you know, whatever. OK, on that. And so she's telling me as we're driving there, she says, listen, my dad isn't going to be nice to you. And so I know I can't change her beliefs. But I can change mine. I don't have any of this uh, trash that uh, built up in history. And so I just started saying to myself, not out loud, because Sharon would have gotten mad. And you believe me, I know, you know, <laughs> that type of thing. And so she would say, uh, he's not going to be nice to you. And I said to myself, he's going to be great to me. And she said, you're not going to have a very good time here. I'm going to have a great time. We're only going to spend 10 minutes there. Uh, we're going to spend a long time there. Okay, that he's not going to call you by your first name. He's going to call me by my first name. So by the time I walk into their home, I am so fired up to see Sledge, okay? And I become irresistible. You can't fight that loving energy, okay? And so initially, Sledge is like, hey, how are you? And barely looks at me. And within a couple of minutes, my vibrations rubbing off on him. And he goes, hey, you know, Hank, hey, come on over to my office. And I'm going to show you my guns. And I'm thinking, God, I hope this really does work. <laughs> I don't get shot. And, uh, but no, we go in the office, shows me his gun. We walk out. He has his arm around me. And Sharon is looking like, 
what is wrong with my dad? Okay. So this goes on and on. And we're there for an hour and a half. Have a great time. We get in the car and Sharon goes, God, I am really concerned. And I go, really? Oh, what's wrong? She goes, well, it's my dad. And I go, what? She goes, well, I, I think my dad, there's really something wrong with him. Really? Why? I thought he was great. No, no, but he was too nice to you. <laughs> so if I can change sledge, all of us can change everybody. The issue is, is when we go to the relatives or whatever, you know, and Joe, Uncle Joe, we don't like him. Well, we keep on saying, oh, yeah, that Uncle Joe, we don't like him. So we build Uncle Joe into the worst, worst person. Every time we think about Uncle Joe, he gets worse and worse in our mind. We control it all. Don't honor the God of other people's opinion. There is one opinion to honor, and that's it. And that is the opinion between you and your higher power. And when so when you're thinking on a subject and you're feeling good, that is the route you take. And there is no cliff you got to jump off. It is your lighted path. All you need to do is ask, hey, what should I do next? Where do I want to go? What do I want to do, be? What kind of relationship do I now want to have with whoever? How much business do I want? How much money do I want? Simply ask and then ask, show me the, the way. And that you will literally, one thought after the next thought, and out of the blue, things will come to you. People will come to you. Circumstances, events, thoughts that will literally, where you will be living a magical life, what you intended to live on this beautiful place we call Mother Earth. Wow, this is this is so. I mean, it is inspiring and it is powerful and it's it's motivating. But I think you used a term which I really gravitate to, which is it gives us hope because we get stuck in these. You know, yeah. I, I say we. I mean, I'm just around people that struggle, and and they don't want to be struggling. But there's there's simple shifts that they can make in the right. way that they think, the way that they yep. think, the way that they speak, and then yep. the actions that they take, you know, and I have a little, I, I like to, I like to write it. I like to read it. I like yeah. to see it. And then I like to do it. That's my, that's been my formula. And I, I don't think I've shared this story. I'll share it with you because it's, it's personal. And I think it reflects what you're saying. Right. So I did have a, a, a very violent upbringing. My father had a, a 45 caliber to my head when I was 19. I was told yeah. from a very young age, I wouldn't amount to anything. You know, I was in school with a trauma impacted brain, not paying attention. The kids, the teachers put me in special ed seventh, eighth grade. My report cards look like a red ink factory. You know, I'm in special ed. I can't read. I can't write well. I can't do math. And my mother had a conversation with me when I was about nine years old, or maybe I was about 10. And she said, look, I, I don't know what to do because I, I can't keep you safe. The only way that you're going to get out of this house is if you get to college. That conversation shifted a thought in my head. I didn't get tutors. I didn't get a brain transplant. Nothing happened. But I went from a red ink special ed student in seventh and eighth grade to a 3.5 GPA at a private Jesuit high school by the time I was, what, 14, 15 years old. Nothing changed, Dr. Hank. Nothing changed. My father didn't change. My environment didn't change. What changed was my thought about school from a challenge or a problem or unwanted to I can't to if I, I'm, my thought changed to an opportunity. And as soon as it shifted, I got better grades simply right. by the power of my thoughts. Yeah. yeah I didn't yeah, realize it then, right? I mean, hindsight's 2020, but we yeah. can, what, my point is you're not a steel worker today because you've had thoughts about becoming an artist. You're a steel worker because somewhere you got an idea that you were going to be a steel worker. Right. We don't become right. what we don't think about. So let's right. be deliberate about what we think about. Right. Right. And to be more general too, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's, um, it's not like, well, I want a million dollars right now today. That really what we all want is just to feel better. So if you can feel better in this moment right now, that you're on your path and that because it will literally, it raises your vibration, raises your point of attraction to get those thoughts and ideas to go from whatever it is to wherever you uh, want to go. And um, a, another thing, so two things, and thank you for sharing that story. It's so inspiring. And see, when we see others do it like you, Charlie, then we know, hey, this is possible. You know, 
for me to be able to change. And it does give us hope and it, it leads us to where we want. And really all we need to do is just to, you know, just start feeling good, these better feeling thoughts. But I want to share two thought, uh, thoughts with you on uh, I, I had mentioned on that people tell me, hey, face reality. And my response to them is, I shall never face reality, but I will always create reality. And so stop facing what this is. Stop honoring the God of other people's opinion. Start honoring the opinion uh, between you and your higher power to where you feel good, that thought, go for it. Uh, and don't do, 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 because then you'll get do, do. And so you want inspired action, only th something that really inspires you, have that inspired action. Get the joy shop from me. And again, you get, get, get it for free, the joy shop that will literally change your life. And the last thing before we go here, Charlie, is... A, a great way you want to be exposed to better thoughts. You know, I just made uh, this year, every year in the middle, at the end of the year, I make a vision board. And so here my vision board is, and you can read like, you know, look what's in the middle of it, you know, love, and then some pictures of things, but mainly it's these thoughts that I have there. And there's a, my little whale that I just was in uh, uh, Puerto Vallarta and uh, saw a whale breach there. And so, you know, think, things are my, and we can all have this life, you know, we can all have uh, the abundant life, but what I'd encourage you all to do to be exposed to more of these ideas, is go to on Facebook. There's a group called Angel Connections, and it's a uh, the Angel in the Cloud. I think there's a couple different ones, but it's the Angel in the Cloud. And there, I share whenever my angels and so what our angels loving energy from my higher power from God, however you want to look at that. But they are just uplifting thoughts, and for you to every day read those thoughts. It'll inspire you. It'll take you higher. And that's all you need to do. And you just want to start flying like an angel, floating like a balloon, being happy, lighten up. All of us to lighten up, enjoy life, and know that we can have it the way that we want it. Wow. What a, I just, what a way to start the year off. I'm, yeah. um, I'm thankful beyond words uh, for the offer to allow everybody to, to, to connect with you and, and get the joy shop and to start their day off right um, to, to, to start voting for what they do want, because it is true. It's not the pursuit of happiness, ladies and gentlemen, men and women, boys and girls. The pursuit is happiness, mm -hmm. the daily enjoyment of the gifts that we bestow upon ourselves and others yeah. is the happiness. And, and I, I believe I today on the 4th of January, 2022 have met the happiest man and, and success leaves clues. So I'm chasing your heart, Dr. Hank. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> thank you, Charlie. I appreciate you, man. And I'll leave you with one more thought. Another please, great thing please. to ask for is I want to see today what I want. When you start doing that, there are so many miracles happening every day around us. We all woke up. Our hearts are beating. We didn't have to tell our hearts how to do it, how to breathe, how to digest. You know, there's so many wonderful things. And if you look out the window, like I'm looking out this window here, and look at that view and the beautiful, you know, the uh, a world out there. We live in paradise if we think so. And so I love you all. Um, know that you have it all to be uh, everything you want to be, do, and have. All the best. Bye-bye.